Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday. It's the fifth day of January, 2022. I hope you're safe and healthy and COVID-free and that your family is also safe and healthy and COVID-free and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and the first responders trying to save lives. Blessings upon those also that make deliveries for our convenience. Blessings also upon those that pick up garbage, keep our streets and sidewalks clean. Double blessings on those trying to help deliver and rescue the victims of child pornography and pornography, child molestation and pedophilia, child prostitution and prostitution, human trafficking and sex slave operations. There are some people that get offended when I say that. I got to believe if you're offended by what I say when I say that, there's a reason. And that type of person, I don't need watching my videos. If that's you, you can stop watching now. And I hope you get cursed if you're performing these acts. Also, blessings upon those that are homeless. 600,000 men, women, and children in the United States and millions around the world with no roof over their head. Blessings upon them, but theirs is the kingdom and those also trying to help. Before I continue, this is my channel. And if I want to give blessings to people, I'm going to do it. If you don't like it, please don't watch. It's not like I'm begging y'all to watch. Okay? I just want y'all to understand that. Some people come on my channel complaining about my intro. You know I don't give a crap about what you think. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm trying to be nice about it. Okay, so there was a basketball game last night at Madison Square Garden. Our New York Knicks beat Indiana Pacers 104 to 94. Um, it was Julius Randle. Apparently, um, it was confirmed yesterday uh, by Tom Thibodeau. Uh, which kind of we should know, but wherever the player is tested positive, they got to stay there. So apparently Julius Randle tested positive for the corona, I mean, for the variant or the virus, the COVID virus in Oklahoma City. And so he had to stay in Oklahoma City until he tested negative. And apparently everybody, you know, whoever the player is, they test you where you at and then that's where you stay until you test negative. So he had to fly when he tested negative and he got out of health and safety protocols. He had to fly from Oklahoma City to Madison Square, to New York, um, to get there for that game yesterday. Um, man, I mean, that was something else. Now, I think this break, this, you know, this small break that Julius had, it was obviously good for him, at least in this game again. You never know what you're going to get with Julius Randle. Okay. You just, <laughs> you just never know. When Julius is good, he's really good. When Julius is bad, well, y'all know. Well, last night he was good. He was really good. I mean, the first 30 seconds, I think the first, let's say the first two minutes of the game, he made two stupid turnovers and it was a bad omen to me. I was like, Oh God, he comes back and he immediately throws the ball away twice. Right. But then the rest of the game, he only had one more turnover. He played 39 minutes. Um, and I got to say, if you notice, if you watch most of the times that he did anything, he was making very quick decisions with the basketball. I mean, he would catch it and either go or pass. One time, it was in the fourth quarter, I think it was, and the Knicks were ahead and he started the over dribbling and he almost lost it. And he actually, at the end of the shot clock, threw up a three that went in. It didn't count because it was before it was after the, the buzz of the shot clock. And I can see what I liked when the highlight to me was he's walking. I don't know. He's going to the bench or going to the foul line or whatever. And he's saying, my bad. Like he realized also for the first time this season. That I know. Now, maybe some of y'all noticed it before and I didn't. If you did, please let me know. But I hear Tom Thibodeau telling him, give the ball to a guard. I'm hearing it. Give it to a guard. <laughs> I was so happy to hear that. It wasn't just like he was allowing Jews to do Give it up to a guard. 
And that helped reduce the turnovers as well. And so those two things are big. Like, imagine this. Imagine if we got that Julius Randle every game. The the scoring is irrelevant. If he makes quick decisions and he lets the guards handle the ball and doesn't try to dribble a lot, we we would have something then. We would have last year's Julius Randle. Okay? And so maybe he's getting it. I don't want to put my hopes up, you know, for you know, so that next game he gets six turnovers trying to dribble into traffic. But hopefully this is a harbinger of what's coming. That he's because Tom is not, you know, Tom is on the sideline saying, get the ball to a guard. He's not just letting him dribble up and not saying anything. So that those two things are big time. That could change the season for the Knicks. It really could. If their hundred million dollar guy plays basketball the right way. That that especially on the offensive end. We just talking offense right now. Um defensively, he was in he was into it. And that's really for Julius Randle, again, you never know what you're gonna get, but when his mindset is right, he plays defense. When his mindset is right, he plays defense. When his mindset is not right, he gets lazy and he doesn't play defense. Now, some of that could be that he's fatigued and Tom not taking him out of the game. But you see, you can't blame Thibodeau because if Julius wanted to come out of the game, he'd wave and come out, right? But if he starts taking plays off, he does it on a defensive end, that's not good. Okay, but last night, he was engaged on both ends of the floor. It was shown, again, to me, the biggest thing he brings to the table is his rebounding, 16 boards last night. Um, and they were, and, and they were all defensive boards. He didn't get any offensive boards, you know, but, okay. But if you watch the game, he was taking down some tough defensive, you know, boards against Sabonis and Turner. Okay. He really was. So, um, it was a great game for Julius Randle. Uh, and again, if he continues to play like that, the Knicks are going to be in really good shape. He does, if he, if he just hands the ball to a guard when he crosses half court with it, or he just lets the guard dribble it up. And he makes quick decisions. He was doing it all night last night. He was getting the ball, making a decision, either going or passing, you know. And it was beautiful. That was beautiful to watch him do that. I'm sitting there watching and I'm saying, wow, look at him. He's making good decisions. So the time off, to me, it looked to me that he reflected on on the game and what he needed to do. And he came in and executed. So you got to give Julius all the credit in the world for that. Again, I, I, I stress whether we like Julius Randle or not, and I've and I'm certainly been enough, uh, you know, giving him a lot of criticism. He ain't going nowhere. Didn't, I told y'all, not this year and not next year. He ain't going nowhere. They're going to keep him, you know. So Tom Thibodeau, could, you know, he's always, as y'all know, he was effusive. He almost was like a proud father talking about Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett last night. I mean, really, it was effusive man and and his, his and we know he has his favorites like for example Emmanuel quickly three of ten from the field one of three from three he hasn't really shot see everybody talk about Deuce McBride but he ain't shot the ball well since Houston either and Tom oh Deuce was great tonight <laughs> I mean not Deuce I uh quick was great tonight and I was like did we watch the same game but anyway <laughs> I was like okay but see if you want, if you in Tom's real house, if he likes you, he likes you. It is what it is, man. But Julius played a great game last night. Um, again, if he can continue to consistently do that, uh, I think the numbers will take care of themselves, but the wins w- will get more, we'll win more games than we lose if he comes and plays like that. He's going to get the minutes. We know Julius Randle's like an indestructible type dude. He's going to get 35, 40 minutes a night. I had earlier this year thought, you know, maybe he should just get 30 and let Toppin take some minutes. But nope, he's Tom is going to play him 35, 40 minutes every night. You know, it's going to be what it is. And he doesn't seem to be complaining about it. So this break for the COVID that he had really helped in, in, in him recommitting to playing the right way. Also, he got a rest, you know, um, so he's fresh going into the second half of the season. It was all good. It was all good. Um, RJ, you know, I mean, I, when, when he scores 32 or if he scores 12, I'm not, I've always told y'all, I'm not concerned about RJ. RJ's a star in the making. 
I'm still watching that cake bake. You know, he's he's still developing. You know, some of y'all don't want to see that, but he's still developing. He's 21. He's developing. Um, he's getting better, really, you know, season by season overall. When you step back and look at it as a, as a, as, a, as an overall thing, he's getting better season by season. And he's right now he's averaging 15. And I think I told you on yesterday's video, that's going to change before the end of the year. He's just, he's just too good. He's getting better. He's a scorer. And so last night, his, his, um, he was pretty good. I mean, really good. His three point shot, he was two of five, but he was 12 of 20. And he, the bully ball was on display last night. He was bully balling. <laughs> Whoever they had on him, they needed to, you know, stop him and they couldn't. So, um, the first quarter, especially, he seemed to, well, he, he is, he is one to let the game come to him in such a way that he'll even take himself out the game. Like he killed him. And I think he had, I think he had almost 19 or 18 points in the first quarter. And then he just kind of went away from it. And then he came back later. But to me, the biggest thing of this game yesterday, if y'all noticed, is when the Knicks were making the run, the offense was flowing through RJ. That was the biggest thing yesterday. I think that's the first time since Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett had been on his team together, that the offense, at least part of that game, actually flowed through R.J. Barrett. And the results speak for themselves. He, They both get 30. I'd like to see that some more. And, and I don't think it was accidental. I think it was by design. I think Tom was trying, especially in the first half, to make the offense flow through R.J. And it was beautiful. RJ is a playmaker for a guy. I mean, he's not a point guard style playmaker. Some of y'all, some people have in the past suggested he get more point. No, no, he's not a point guard. That would not be good. But a playmaker from the wing, that he is. Because he got the basketball IQ. He's still going to make some dumb mistakes. He's 21. He's getting better. Okay. Um, and last night, you know, 32 points, eight rebounds, three assists, a steal. I mean, only two turnovers plus nine. What are you going to do, man? You know, he still needs to get better on the defensive end on a more consistent basis. But what I do know about the boy from what he's already said, the young man, excuse me, but he's aware of that and he knows it. And you know one thing for sure. He's going and he is working on that. So that's why I don't worry about him. Some of you act like he don't practice all the time or he don't know what to practice. These are NBA players <laughs> and they got a whole bunch of guys, you know, assistant coaches and trainers and all that watching them. He knows what he got to do. And one thing is what you got to decide if you're an NBA player is, are you going to coast on the talent that got you there? Or are you going to try your best to improve on that talent and, and develop? And I think RJ is definitely in the latter category. So he's, he's coming along nicely. Uh, and so I'm going to, I want to continue to see, I would love to see the offense flow through him more um because he's not going to freeze anybody out he's going to make the right basketball decision okay um so that was <laughs> that was really good um they started Taj yesterday and I think you know Tom said it was, he just wanted to make sure Mitch was recovered Mitch only missed like two or three days I think but anyway Taj played 23 minutes and Mitch played 25 Taj started um, you know, he was, you know, he did what he did to me, the 23 minutes that Taj played. That's exactly what you want. 20, 23, 25 at the most. You want to overplay Taj Gibson. He's older and he can, he's very effective in that 20 minute stint, you know, for us. He played good defense yesterday. The rest were calling phantom fouls. Um, but six rebounds. He scored four points. That's what you want from him. Good defense, high IQ on both ends of the basketball floor. Very good. Alec Burke played 36 minutes, 5 or 13. You know, I was hoping I would see more Deuce McBride, but as I, get, as I thought about it, I realized this is Tom Thibodeau we're talking about. So Deuce is not IQ to him. He's not, you know, he's definitely, you know, he's not RJ. He's not going to get that type of minutes. We talked about yesterday how he develops players. This is Deuce's rookie year. If he's forced to play Deuce McBride, he will. <laughs> but otherwise, so let Deuce McBride get three minutes yesterday. He was in the first half, but and Tom did mention him in the post game interview. But three minutes, man, and then Obi goes from forty four minutes to forty five minutes. He played nine minutes yesterday. D 
these are the two things, you know. Now, I'm not as concerned with Dukes because, again, if you look at the Jimmy Butler comparison in terms of the, the maturation and development, the way, the way Tom Thibodeau does it, I'm not surprised. And then Dukes being a point guard and Tibbs is – there's two coaches in, that I've seen in, in, in my history of watching NBA basketball that are the hardest on point guards, that have driven point guards – to want to leave them or to love them. And that is Larry Brown and Tom Thibodeau. And, and those two guys have a lot in common. Those two guys. Um, Larry Brown won that championship with Detroit. It was the only championship he won, but he was always, he was going from place to place and he was always, um, trying to learn and trying to win. And every team he went to would end up with better than 500 record, Larry Brown. The only time he didn't get it is when Isaiah Thomas was the president and he was coaching here. And he seemed to be losing his mind a little bit, if you ask some of the players. But that was the only time he really had a losing season. Um, but Larry Brown was very hard on his point guards, very hard on his point guards. And um, Chauncey Billups, you know, who at the point in his career, people were starting to consider him a bit of a bust. He went, he had went to Boston. He had went to Denver and did good. I mean, obviously, but when he wasn't what everybody thought he was coming out of Colorado. And so when he went to Larry Brown, he just accepted all of Larry Brown's crap and he ended up winning a chip. Same with Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson wasn't having it, you know, with Larry Brown too much. They was really clashing. Then, and then AI just decided, listen, I'm, I want to win, even if this guy I don't like him. And Larry Brown put together a formula. They never won a chip, but they went to the finals. And they did, they had no business going to the finals that year. But that was a tremendous coaching job. And and Tibbs is very similar. So he's very hard on his point guards, especially his rookie point guards. So, yeah, that's what he's going to do. But I'm concerned about Obi. Um, okay, so he got 44 minutes against Toronto. He played a couple of games. He got 19 on Sunday against Toronto. And that was only his second start. You know, I still believe if Obi was to be the full-time starter. Now, he's not going to be. But I'm saying if he was to be a full-time starter, he would probably give you 19 to 22 a game. You know, as a full-time starter, playing full-time minutes for the long term. He's not the same as Julius Randle. He's not a big rebounder. He's a speed guy. He would be able to take advantage of other fours. They'd have to put smaller fours on him because he's too fast for the bigger fours. He would kill him, right? And in the smaller fours, once he learns, if he's still learning to shoot the mid-range shot, he's going to be overwhelming for them. You know, that's, that's, that's OB. Too much athleticism there. So, um, in the future, we may have an issue because nine minutes. I don't know. That's not going to work. That's not going to work for him. Maybe this year, but like I said, next year is the extension year. So it's beginning to talk, start talking extensions on the rookie deal. Obi in his final year of a rookie deal, going to be 25, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be 25. Uh, going, so that's a, that's a young man going into his prime years and he's going to want to get paid and he should. So. But that's not something we got to deal with. Now nah, it's just hard to see him get nine minutes. You know, I don't know what else we could have did. But anyway, quickly, of course, you know, a pet of Tibbs. He wanted to his pets. He got 22 minutes, three of 10, one of four. He was four or four from the line. He's leading the NBA in free throw shooting uh, right now, quickly. He's a great free throw shooter, man. And so, um, you know, he got 11 yesterday. But, you know, like I said, he's not a point guard. And if he was a point guard, he would be starting at the point guard because Tibbs loves this guy. But he's not a point guard. He's an off guard and he's a bench piece. And that's how Tibbs is using him. Now, Fournier. He played 22 minutes. 0 of 4 from the field. 0 of 3 from 3.9. One rebound. Two assists. One steal. He was minus one. He got in, he was on a nut, as he used to say. He did not score yesterday. And he played 22 minutes, which you know what I'm about to say next. That was 22 minutes too long. I would love to see less Fournier and more Quentin Grimes. Yesterday, Quentin Grimes played 20 minutes. He only scored three points, but the defense was the defense that he displays on the floor. It's obvious, you know, he's a much better player. So 
even as a rookie. And I think him now being permanently in the rotation, you know, you're going to see more of that. I, like I said, I said before and I'll say it again. I think the next shoe to drop is Fournier. You know, uh, I don't, I can't, cons- I can't see him continuing to be in the starting five and being this negative, you know, on both ends of the floor. If he's scoring, okay, okay. But if he's not scoring and you, you know, his defense is not the best, that, Quentin Grimes should be in there. So we're going to watch that situation closely. But Quentin Grimes played good. Fournier did not. I would have loved to see more Quentin, less Fournier. I don't think the game would have been quite even as close as it was if that was the case. That was a big one right there. Um, and then, of course, you know, I think I mentioned, I think I mentioned Burks already. Mitchell Robinson, you know, 25 minutes. He had eight boards. We out-rebounded. The, the Knicks out-rebounded Indiana yesterday. Indiana had 35 rebounds and Knicks had 51 rebounds. That's a Tom Thibodeau. That's one of Tom Thibodeau's things right there. You, you're going to get strong rebounding, strong defense. Um, they didn't play perfectly, but we can, we'll take this win. So uh, going into Boston, I want to see how he runs out Kemba. Kemba, you know, they, they were, I guess they were concerned that maybe he really like, damaged his knee further, which is why they ran MRIs and stuff on him. And they found out it was just a sore knee, but the issue is still there. It's, it, I don't think anybody on the Knicks or anybody in Knicks nation was thinking Kimball was going to injure his knee. That's not the problem. The problem is that his knee cannot hold up to the pounding of the NBA for, but for a limited time. That's the problem. It's not that Kemba is going to tear his ACL or his MCL. That's not, we're not dealing with that. But the problem is that his knee is degenerative, which means it's a permanent problem. And, and so we saw that flare up. Um, and, and Kemba's willing, as we have seen, he's willing to come out and play even if he only has one leg. I'm concerned about that because that does hurt the team. Kemba is not, you know, when he's fresh, as we saw, he was off three weeks. And when he came back, he was 40 points, 25 points. He was doing things that you expect Kemba to do, the Charlotte Kemba, right? But then the knee flared up. And that's what you're going to get. Again, some of you guys, you know, it's y'all just stubborn and difficult. Because, again, your coach is a scorpion. He's not a frog. If you're going to play point guard for Tom Thibodeau, you're going to play the minutes like Alec Burks last night, 36 minutes. That's what you're going to do if you're the point guard for, for Tom Thibodeau. That's just how it is. It's not a fault. It's not a negative. It's not, this is what it is. So if Kemba's going to be the point guard, he got to do that. If he can't do that, he shouldn't be the point guard. Simple. Some of y'all just can't handle that truth, man, but that's the way it is. Okay. If you're going to play for him, he's going to run an eight to 10 man rotation. You close to the eight. <laughs> Like last night, he, you know, eight guys got the minutes because really Obi got nine minutes and McBride got three. It was Robinson, Quickly, and Grimes off the bench that got all the minutes. That was eight man rotation for the, for, you know, all practical purposes. And so there you go. He might expend it to nine with Obi. And then his starters are going to be playing heavy minutes. Julie's 39 minutes, 42 minutes for RJ Barrett, 36 minutes for. Uh, Alec Burke. That's how he does it. It is what it is. Y'all can say, well, he grinds his players down. He does this. He does it. It's irrelevant. Why are we wasting time talking about something that's not going to change? It is what it is. Okay. So if Kemba can't do that, he shouldn't be playing. So I don't think he can. Not for, to me, if you rest him a whole week, maybe he can come back and do it for two games and you have to rest him again. That's what's going to happen. Okay, so anyway, he wasn't playing last night. And I thought that was a positive, you know. But I believe Tibbs is gonna play him. He's gonna put him out there. So it is what it is. Um, yeah. So it was a good game. We got the win. The Knicks are now uh, their record is eighteen and twenty. We got a home and home against Boston coming up this week. Thursday we're in the Garden, and then Saturday night we're in Boston. Um, you know. And Boston is not, I mean, it's considered a road game, obviously, but it's not that far. It's not like they got to go far and 
do a lot of traveling to get there, which to me is good because you don't want to wear your players down on that road trip. You're going to have some real strong road trips coming up, but that's not one. Of them. And so I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing right now, especially, like I said, Julius is one of the keys. And if he continues to play like that in terms of just making good decisions and being in, in la- not trying to become a point forward, giving the ball up to a guard, and then being engaged on defense, we're, we're going to be in good shape and run the offense through RJ. The Knicks are going to be pretty good. You know, they're going to get better. And so now we're getting healthy. I think we only uh, – Nerland's cleared protocols yesterday. And so I think we're going to have him back. Jericho was on the sideline yesterday. So I think we're getting healthy again at the right time. Uh, I don't know what Boston's – let me look and see what Boston's situation is in terms of health with their injuries, with their injury situation. Boston uh, – um, Boston is uh, – Robert Williams is day-to-day. Jabari Parker is questionable due to dental work. Mm, okay. Romeo Langford, questionable. Uh, Aaron Neesmith, questionable for Wednesday's game. So they're, they're playing Wednesday against San Antonio. Um, and then they play us Thursday at the Garden. So they must be, obviously, they're on a road trip of some sort. Let me see here. It looks like... Yeah, they're, they're playing in Boston against San Antonio today, the 5th. And then they play us in New York, the 6th. So it's a little bit of a back-to-back. It is a back-to-back for them. Then they play us again on Saturday. So um, they in their la- they lost three in a row, then they won their last two. They actually beat Phoenix last Friday night, and they beat Orlando in overtime on Sunday. So Brown, that's the game um, Jalen Brown dropped 50. Jalen Brown went nuts. In fact, he's been going nuts the last few games. So this is not going to be easy, and I'm glad. We need to play them, period, period, <laughs> right? So let's get it done. We play Boston on Thursday in the Garden. Let's see what we could do, all right? In the meantime, please be safe out there. Sure.